Amen. Thank you, Stephanie. Good morning to you and welcome into worship this morning. We are delighted to have you here at Forest Park United Methodist Church. This is our traditional worship service uh, and uh, whether you're here or whether you're watching online, we are glad to have you today. If you are with us today, hey, uh, do something for me. I would appreciate it very much. Uh, if you will just separate this from the end of your bulletin, it's easier than I make it look. Separate this from the end of your bulletin, fill that out, drop it in the offering plate as it comes around, drop it in one of the white baskets, uh, just your pertinent information. Uh, you can drop it in the offering plate or you can drop it, like I say, in one of the white baskets. If you're watching online, just as a, a record of your visit, if you would give us a thumbs up or a hey or a smiley face or whatever you do on Facebook, uh, let us know where you are, let us know where you're watching from and that you were with us today. My name is David Willis. It's my privilege to be the pastor here at Forest Park. I say that not because you don't know who I am, though you may not, but I say that for all of the people that are watching online. Everybody online may not know exactly who I am. But I trust if you are here today that uh, you're familiar with us, and we thank you for taking time out of your week. In just a few moments, I'm going to call Karen Burrell to come up and share with us our uh, latest financial update. We've uh, uh, made it a, a promise to you to try to give a financial update once quarterly or at least three times a year. It is time for that. Karen's going to come up and share with us. And gentlemen, by way of announcement in the sound booth, she's going to be using this microphone right here when she comes up the one that Gene uses. So take just a moment and uh, look at your announcements. We have a church-wide meeting today at four o'clock. Church Council urges all members to attend. Uh, it is, of course, regarding the uh, division that we're experiencing within the United Methodist Church. And I just want you to have the information that you need uh, to understand where we are as an individual church and what our future looks like. No voting going on, just a time of sharing information with you, a time for you to ask questions if you have questions. Rebuild Bay, Mobile Food Pantry, we are looking forward to partnering, partnering with Rebuild Bay, but I'll tell you, Rebuild Bay does some really good work, and we are proud to be able to work with them uh, on Saturday, August 6th. We hope that you can come join us here at 8 o'clock. We're going to set up and uh, going to need about 30 people uh, to help uh, deliver the food that day. It, it'll be here. People will come here, but to get it to people's cars and help pack the bags, we will certainly appreciate your help there. Adult Sunday school class is going strong. You can read those details there. Children's ministry going strong. The 31st, Fifth Sunday Games and Giving, that's coming up. Then Blessing of the Backpacks on Sunday, August 7th. I want to let you know also that our student ministry is going strong. Our students got back from a youth camp last week. I had a great time and was talking with Sam about that. A great time was had by all. Uh, no injuries, no bloodshed, and a lot of Jesus. So that's a good thing. That, that was a good thing. Men's ministry, senior adults listed there. Women's ministry going strong as well. As well as a record of our faithfulness here at the church. Thank you for your support. And as Karen makes her way up, I would like to take just a moment to thank you so much for all the uh, happy birthday wishes, for your prayers, for your gifts, and uh, for being with me last week at, at our little... Uh, little birthday party that we had after the uh, late worship service. Thank you so much for thinking about me. It was a great day, great week, and uh, thank you for your prayers. Karen, come share with us this morning. Let's see. There we go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good morning, everybody. I thank you for the opportunity to be here. Um, I am your chair of your finance committee, and uh, as David said, it was our goal to make sure that we give uh, regular updates on where we are financially. And this morning's update is considered our mid-year update. Go to the second slide, please. And so we're halfway through the year. That makes us 50% of the way through the budget. Um, and I also talked to the uh, building loan pay payout. That's what this, uh, this slide tells you. So, um, yeah, you can go to the next one now. So just to remind you, our ministry budget gifts, we call it our ministry budget. Sometimes we call it the general fund. Um, that is the part of your tithes 
the, the non-directed portion. That is the part that goes into all of the work that we do here at the church. That is what supports our children's programs. That is what supports our adult programs. Um, so it, it reaches across the entire ministry of the church, and that's why we call it your ministry budget. Okay, you can go to the next. So with our congregational giving, focusing in on the ministry budget, this chart shows you a comparison of the last three years where we were halfway through the year uh, at the end of June. And the important thing to take away from this is not that you can see the numbers, they're all really, really small, but we are basically at 50% of the year and we're right at 50% of the budget. Uh, we have pretty much stayed even, so that's a very good thing. Uh, we are on par with where we were in 2020 at this time. Uh, we're, last year we were definitely uh, lagging behind at this time, and as y'all will, will recall, there was a lot of concern, and the, the church stepped up last year in the second half of the year, and so we ended the year uh, right where we needed to be budget-wise. Um, and so this year we are on par, so we want to continue uh, as we are doing right now. Uh, with the building loan payoff, I'll show you a, a chart in just a moment that's a little more detailed. Uh, it looks like we're further behind. Um, last year, you'll recall, we had a big bump because we had a big private, uh, not private, but a big fundraising event here that really uh, added a lot to our payoff principle. Um, but this year, we are, if you'll go to the next one, uh, we are continuing to um, pay that off, and we're making our payments, our minimum payments, just fine. So um, with other giving and income, what I want you to see here is in addition to the ministry budget, uh, there are several different categories which are really directed donations, things like when you give directly to the Honduras Missions Program or where you give directly to a youth fundraiser. Those go in these other categories. Uh, so they all, all add up to the general fund. But the majority of donations are your general tithes which go into the ministry budget. Okay, next please. So the building loan payoff here, uh, as you can see, this is tracking back to 2015. We actually started uh, the Fellowship Hall, that's the building loan that we're talking about back in 2010. The initial amount financed was $1.25 million. Um, but you can see over the past few years, especially over the last three years, we've really, um, really paid off quite a bit of the principal. And right now from this year, uh, halfway through the year, we've gone from about 377 k due at the end of last year to now 313000 remaining as of halfway through this year. Um, so we are, we are staying on track with that. Okay, next please. I just wanted to remind you, you know, as you're starting to look at the end of the year finances, we're nowhere close to the last quarter, but uh, there are a lot of ways that you can give. We've started passing the plate again. Uh, for, those, for those of us who've been around a lot, that makes us happy. Uh, it's the old fashioned way of doing it, but it's the one I like. Uh, we've also expanded our online giving opportunities because now we do have that app, that mobile app that you can put on your phone, and that's the tithe.ly. And if you need instructions, uh, some of us can help you. Uh, and um, and then, of course, you can also go online. One of the things I wanted to point out, if you do the online, you go to the, either the app or the um, website, and you go to online giving, you have the opportunity to give with a credit card, which is nice, um, but it does charge the church a service fee unless you take the opportunity to also include that in your giving. Um, but the other really good thing about the online giving is just like, you know, some of us do with our insurance or our house payments, if you want to set it up to just go in on a regular basis, you can do that also. And it's, it's all pretty straightforward if you've done any of the online payments, uh, you can do that. So that's one of your options. Um, as you're looking for, you know, ways to leverage off of what you're spending already, uh, some of the cool things you can do is if you buy a lot from Amazon, 
that would be me, boxes and boxes. Um, you can sign up with Amazon Smile, and Forest Park is one of the direct charities, and every time you give, a few pennies, or sometimes more, goes to Forest Park, and it actually adds up to a, a good little sum over the, over the year. And uh, we are trying to get more information on this, but I've, I've been told that United Way will let us direct some. Uh, one of our church members had done this to the food bank uh, several years ago. So we'll put some information up there uh, online so that if you're interested at work, if you, you know, do United Way contributions, you could direct those. Uh, so just looking for unique ways that take advantage of programs already out there. Okay? Next one. And um, I think that actually just wraps me up. And I just wanted to, again, today's, today's presentation was really just to tell everybody we appreciate all of your efforts and your continuing contributions and generosity. And we're doing everything we can to make sure that we keep everything on track and clear and transparent. And if you have any questions, uh, my name's Karen Borrell. You can always call Faith and she'll give you my phone number or my email address and I'd be happy to, to talk to you. So once again, thank you and y'all have a great day. Thank you, Karen. Appreciate what Karen does. Appreciate everything that all of the lay leadership here at the church does. But the uh, finance committee has done uh, a great work over the past few years to, to keep us up to date. And I want to take just a moment to thank them. But I also want to take a moment to thank you for your faithfulness in supporting our church here. We are doing our best to be uh, financially responsible and to let you know exactly um, what, uh, what we are doing with the funds that, that you trust us with here at the church. And uh, the key word there that Karen used to, to me is transparency. Uh, all of these uh, slides that we've just shared with you are available online. You can go to our webpage, www.fpumc.org at any time, and you can go through those slides. Or if you're not technically savvy, if you will call the church and let Faith know, Faith will print out a copy for you, and you can swing by and pick those up. We would be happy to share those with you. Thank you again for your support uh, of the church here through your tithes and your offerings. Let's take some time now to pray before we move into worship this morning. Bow with me. Father, we're so grateful that you are with us today through the power of the Holy Spirit that lives within us. You are here. We declare that we have gathered in your name to lift you up, to worship you, to praise you. And we pray, Father, that now as we do gather in your name, that you would open our hearts and our minds to your presence today, that what we offer to you would be a blessing to you that you would be glorified, and that we would be revived. That's what we seek today, that we may go into the world and be your presence here and now. Inhabit our worship and praise. We offer these things in Christ's name. Amen. some of our friends, but we have some on vacation, and of course Ron and his group are in Honduras, so we pray for a, a great last week and safe journey for, for everybody coming back. If you please stand, we'll sing our first hymn together. This is a good old song you'll know. Hey, uh, ho ho hold up just a minute, I'm sorry, are we, we're not able to do the, the slides, are they dead? Working, working on oh, the slides. Okay. So uh, if you know the words, sing along. If you don't, <laughs> hum. If you can't hum, just say the word watermelon over and over again <laughs> under your breath, and it will look like you're singing. Okay? So thank you. We, we will all join in together and do something. How about that? Oh, there we go. Perfect. Perhaps. Oh, God, I have been. 
last our hope for years to come. Our shelter from the stormy blast and our eternal home. Under the shadow of thy throne still may we dwell secure. Sufficient is thine arm alone and our defense is sure. Before the hills in order stood or earth received her frame. From everlasting thou art God through endless years the same. A thousand ages in thy sight are like an evening gone. Short as the watch that is the night before the rising sun. Time like an ever-rolling stream bears all its suns away. They fly forgotten as a dream dies as the opening day. Oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Be thou our God while life shall last and our eternal Join us now in our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Gene, share with us from the Word of the Lord today. morning and this Sunday I can say uh, I, I don't sound well but I feel great all right uh, thanks to antibiotics provided by the Lord amen our reading this morning comes from the New Testament uh, the second book of Thessalonians chapter 1 verses 3 through 7 uh, from a new international version we ought always to thank God for you brothers and sisters and rightly so because your faith is growing more and more and the love of all you have for one another is increasing. Therefore, among God's churches, we boast about your perseverance and faith in all the persecutions and trials you are enduring. All this is evidence that God's judgment is right. And as a result, you will be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are suffering. God is just. He will pay back trouble to those who trouble you and give relief to you who are troubled, and to us as well. This will happen when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven in blazing fire with his powerful angels. Blessed be God's holy word. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Gene. Let's take time to pray once more. Bow with me. Loving God, one of the... Um, one of the greatest gifts that you've ever given to us is the reassurance of your word. 
When Gene shares with us those readings, it reflects generally what we speak about as we share your word again when we share the sermon with each other. The word today is, is promise. The word today is, is hope. The word today is restoration. And we're grateful that there are so many words that describe who you are to us. You are good and it builds our faith. And we have faith because you are good. You hold true to your word and for that we are eternally grateful. Your grace, your mercy know no bounds and in all things we can turn and we can see that truly you are God but there are times that are puzzling. Certainly as we look around us now at this world Father we sometimes puzzle. Sometimes we may be even tempted to ask where, where is God? And we remember the truth that you who have made and order all things are never far from us. You are always by our side. When we begin to doubt, we have but to look to that word that we started talking about just a, just a few minutes ago. So we hold to that truth and we thank you for it. We've united ourselves together today uh, electronically or face to face to share fellowship with you, to open your word, to sing of your goodness, your grace, to sing of your glory, so that we, Heavenly Father, might experience a sense of revival. Because as you know, because you chose to walk a mile in our shoes literally, sometimes life this side of heaven can weigh us down. Sometimes we need a fresh outpouring of your spirit. That is what we seek today. We offer ourselves to you as we offer those in our congregation who are ailing, those who are sick, those who are broken, those who are depressed and lonely. We offer ourselves to you today just as we offer those who are working now that we may be safe, those who wear the uniform of our military, those who would seek to lead us. We offer ourselves to you today to serve those who need a face-to-face -face expression of who you are. Let your will be worked out through our hands and our feet. And as we serve in your name, may you be glorified. Today, Father, as we close, we pray as we do every week that you teach us to pray the same way you taught your disciples when you told them to say this our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. sing another good old song that you'll recognize called The Solid Rock. <clears throat> Solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking. 
make their way forward this morning. Let's take time to pray together. Heavenly Father, we started out this morning with um, a report of our faithfulness here at the church through the giving of our tithes and our offerings. Too often we think that is something separate from worship, but it is indeed a true act of worship, for it is a true act of trust. Today we don't pause worship, we continue our worship through the giving of our tithes and our offerings. So today, Lord, we worship you through them. We pray that you multiply the gift and the giver both, that both may go into the world to serve you. We pray these things in Christ's precious name. Amen. You may be seated.
Stand together, please. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. You may be seated. Great time in worship this morning. Thank you to Chris. Thank you to the hymn team for helping us out. Uh, we are few in number this morning. That is why you hear my voice chiming in occasionally. I cannot sing, but I can carry a bucket, and sometimes there's a tune in it. Uh, so thank you to them, and uh, thank you to you for joining us today. I, um, I, I, I'm very cognizant at times of bursting your bubble okay when I stand up here I realize that there are some things about uh, just life in general things about scripture that you may not know and I really 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 if I'm gonna drop something on you I don't want to do it too hard but this morning I have to tell you something that might burst your bubble um, there are parts of reality television that are fake. I, I, just, I want you to know that, okay, if there are a couple of, of reality television shows that you, would, that you would classify as true reality television shows that aren't fake, um, one of them is, is the old television show Cops, okay? Um, Cops is real. Okay, what you see happening there is what's happening. What they cut out is all of the paperwork that goes along with it. Okay, they just show you the exciting parts. Another one that, that's really real, uh, that really became popular over the past few years is a show, I think it's on A&E, called Night Watch. And they go to different big cities and they ride with EMTs and paramedics and that's real. What they cut out is all of the boring stuff that goes on. But uh, shows like, uh, oh, uh, you remember the People's Court with Judge Wapner? And I guess that's evolved now into Judge Judy and all of these other court television shows. I, I hate to break it to you, but those court cases have already been decided before they go in and film before the plaintiff, before the defendant stands up, before Judge Judy comes out. Those cases have already been decided. So those behind the scenes say, I am no authority on this, but I have it on good authority, the internet, that that's the way things work. So that's, that's wild. And what's wild about that is the, the reason they do that is because they want to be fair. They want everybody to, to have justice. Now, the, the cases that they cover on, like Judge Judy and, and all of those others, they're, they're small claims cases, and, and they're real. 
but they've been decided so they can, I guess, be fair at that point in time. And just in the realm of, of talking honestly with you, I struggle with God's fairness at times. Because there are times when God doesn't seem very fair to me. There are times when God says things in His Word or does things in His Word that just puzzle me. This prophet that we're going to cover today is, is Nahum, as we continue our summer series of looking at the prophets. And Nahum is dealing with the judgment of Assyria. Because Assyria has been used by God to bring about judgment on his people. And now he, Nahum, is prophesying about what's going to happen to Assyria because Assyria has mistreated God's people. That's puzzling to me. But I'm not God. The old uh, popular saying, it's above my pay grade, I'm okay with that. That's above my pay grade. We find Nahum prophesying in the mid-600 B.C. So he is uh, 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 more contemporary, more new, if you will, than let's say, oh, does anybody know where I'm going? Let's say than Jonah. Why am I going back to Jonah? Well, if you've read ahead, if, if you know Nahum, and, and you read through Nahum, all three chapters of it this week, you know that there's a place called Nineveh that is mentioned not only in the book of Jonah, but also in the book of Nahum. And if you remember how the book of Jonah ended, Jonah was hacked at God. Jonah was just mad with God because God did not lay waste to Nineveh. You remember? You know the whole story of the whale. Washed up on the shore. He walks through the town. He preaches that they probably need to turn from their wicked ways. And they do. And he gets mad. And he walks outside the city. And he sits down, builds a shelter. It hadn't been that long since we talked about this, just a couple of weeks. He builds himself a shelter and he waits because he wants to see if God will relent and destroy Nineveh. But God doesn't. God says, I am who I am. And I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And that's when we began the discussion of the sovereignty of God. That God is not only sovereign over his people, God is sovereign over everything. And so now here we are a scant few hundred years later and God is prophesying through Nahum that he is about to lay waste to Nineveh. Poor Jonah. Jonah would have been a really lousy travel agent because he went completely and totally the wrong direction and he completely and totally was off uh, of his schedule by a few hundred years. He would have been a lousy, lousy travel agent. But Nahum is prophesying to and about Nineveh and to and about Israel. And what he's prophesying just really puzzles me. Because the way Judge Judy settles her cases to make sure everything's fair beforehand just doesn't seem like there's much fairness in this at all. Now there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of prophesying that goes on in the book of Nahum. But as we're talking about restoration, and as we're talking about hope, and as we're talking about healing, you can see our pot is, is coming back together here. It's been crushed. We're just going to deal with two verses of Nahum today. You have your Bibles with you. Turn to the Old Testament book of Nahum. And we're going to be looking at the very first chapter. Nahum chapter 1 verses 7 and 8. Nahum chapter 1 verses 7 and 8. And this is what Nahum says in the midst of, of prophesying against Nineveh. Nahum says this, the Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. But with an overwhelming flood he will make an end of Nineveh. He will pursue his foes into darkness. The Lord is good, 
a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. But with an overwhelming flood, he will make an end to Nineveh. He pursues his foes into darkness. Uh, allow me just a, a moment here to divvy this up. To compare this scripture with some other scripture really against itself. The Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. That's the very first part of verse 7. Compare that with the very first part of verse 8. The Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble, but with an overwhelming flood, he will make an end of Nineveh. The Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble, but with an overwhelming flood, he will make an end of Nineveh. The Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. Last week we talked about God's identity. A few weeks ago we talked about the uh, idea of who God is. Here, Nahum tells us the God, that God is good and, and that he is a refuge in times of trouble. For you and for me that bear the mark of who he is through the power of the Holy Spirit that lives within us, God makes it clear that he is our refuge. It doesn't matter what's going on within us. It doesn't matter what's going on around us. We always have refuge with him. It doesn't matter what this world casts upon us. We always have refuge with him. And then he goes on and he begins to talk about Nineveh. How he's going to lay waste to Nineveh. And those two contrasting scriptures tell the truth about who God is. And when I consider and I think about God's fairness and I puzzle over that, and I'm sure I'm not the only one that does that, and I puzzle over that, I begin to wonder, what's the difference? What's the difference between God's judgment and just life? Okay, because life is unfair. So how do I know if I am in God's refuge while the world rages around me, or if I'm with Nineveh about to be judged. Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever wondered, how do I know if I'm being disciplined by God, or, or if I'm just suffering the unfairness of life this side of heaven? It bothers me. I lose sleep over it. You've heard me talk about those families that are, that are snake bit before, right? You, you know those families. They, they just completely and totally get swept over and over and over again by the waves of life. And they can't seem to catch their breath. Are they being judged? Are they suffering God's discipline? Or is that just the unfairness of life? Well, the answer is pretty intricate. It's intricate because we live in a fallen world. So, you know what the source of that is? Us. We're the source of that confusion. God is not a God of chaos. God is a God of order. God did not intend for things to be this way, but we intended to do things our own way, so we get this confusion within us. So let's just lay that out right now. We are the source of the confusion that we feel. We are the source of the wrestling that we do with the goodness of perfect and perfectness of God. We, we are the source of that. Uh, personally, did I eat the apple? No. Personally, did, did one of you offer the apple to me? No. But we suffer the consequences of that. And one of the consequences that we suffer is the fact that we struggle with our own idea, our own concept of fairness. What is right and what is wrong. But back to the question at hand. Am I being punished? Am I being disciplined? Or am I suffering life? Well, the answer is intricate because Paul tells us that we can suffer for good and we can suffer for evil. As a matter of fact, Paul tells us at one point in his writing, it's better for you to suffer because you do good things than suffer because you do evil things. 
So we get lost in that mishmash. Well, well, here's the truth. Sometimes we suffer the consequence of our own stupid decisions. Okay? No kids in here so I can say the stupid word. I won't say it in the late service. We suffer because of our own stupid decisions. I.e., you get fired from your job because you slack off at work. Hey, you have a heart attack at 49 years old because you drink bacon grease with your coffee in the morning. You understand what I'm saying. And, and then there are those times when, when the diagnosis comes or the divorce happens or the money ends and there's two weeks of month left. And we're just standing around wondering what's going on. And, and we're suffering the consequences of living in a fallen world. I mean, that's ultimately the, the gist of all of it. We're suffering the consequences of living in a fallen world because why do we die? Why do we have heart disease? Why do we have divorce? Why do we have all of these things that are imperfect? War and strife, etc., etc. Well, it's because of original sin. None of that was intended by God in the first place. But what about God's discipline? God chastens those whom He loves. You, you ever heard that before? God disciplines those whom He loves, and, and He does. And He does. So if you're wondering, if you're scratching your head and you're thinking, hmm, okay, so this has happened. Where did I sin? There may be a connection. There may be a connection. This has happened. Where did I sin? And you may be experiencing consequences that are truly God's discipline. Not because he wants to hammer you, but because he wants to draw you back. You see, God chastens those whom he loves, and he loves everyone. So the question becomes, not necessarily, what did I do to deserve this? But what is God trying to do with me through this? And the key word there is, what is God trying to do with me? through this as you may be at the bottom of the barrel as far as life goes but when you reach out you're going to find that God is right there beside you what is God trying to do with me through this let us not be so caught up in trying to figure out why we were born blind you remember that conversation with Jesus and his disciples his disciples are walking along and, and they, they see a man born blind. And they ask him, Jesus, who, who sinned, this man's mother or his father, that he was born blind? And Jesus said, you got it all wrong. You've got it all wrong. This man was born blind so that the glory of God can be shown through him. And he ends up healing the man. Well, there's that fairness thing again, right? So, so you mean to tell me that, that you struck this man blind, God, so that your glory could be made shown? That seems to be what Jesus is saying. And the truth is, through his blindness, God working with him, restored him, and glorified his own name. So if you're struggling with the concept of fairness, like I do so often, if you're struggling with the concept of, of grief, if you're struggling with the concept of, of just poor me, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't, because I know some of your stories, and there are some of you who should be asking, poor, why me? Okay? Some of us have had things happen in our life that, that hold us under the water. But when you find yourself in that place, look for the source, and if it's something you need to change, change it. But don't get fixated on that. Get fixated on what God is trying to do with you through this. 
What is God trying to do with me through this? And never, ever, ever, ever forget that long before Nahum prophesied of Nineveh's demise, God sent Jonah to them to give them a chance to come to know who he is so that they too might become his people. And though they might experience trials and tribulation, that they would leave him something to work with. Restoration, hope, and healing means that we never forget that God is there for us and that he's always looking for us to reach for him so that he can work with us. Pray with me. That sense of fairness, Father, is something that we learned on the playground. That sense of fairness, Father, is something that those of us who have siblings are very well versed in. That sense of fairness, Father, is why we have officials on sports playing fields. In other words, that sense of fairness is something that's, that's really ingrained within us. And sometimes we struggle with the concept, not of your fairness, but we struggle with the whole concept of who you are. Forgive us for that. Thank, us, thank you for making us rational beings that we can wrestle with things like that. But help us to know and understand that you are the one who is the author of fairness. And only you can be truly fair. Because you were in our yesterdays, you are in our todays, and you're in our tomorrows. And only someone who is that can be truly fair. So we puzzle and we scratch our heads. And, and dare I say, even sometimes we suffer. Let us not waste time wondering why. So much so that we blind ourselves to what you're trying to do with us, alongside us, in the trials that we face. Open our ears, Lord. Open our eyes. We want to see you at work within our life. We ask this humbly in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Friends, the altar is open. If you need to come forward and pray, please feel free to do so. If you would like to unite with our church as a member, this is the time to come forward and make your wishes known. Please stand and join us in singing one of my old favorites, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. from all alarms
comes. Never hear that song. Hey, am I on? Did I turn myself off? I think I did. Hang on just a minute. There we go. I never hear that song that in, in my mind, I don't hear Andy and Barney singing it. Uh, have you ever seen that Andy Griffith before where they sing that? Man, those guys could sing like crazy. Love, love, love that song. Thank you for coming. Receive this benediction as you depart. Move into the world understanding and knowing that God is on your side and he is not against you. Do this so that you can move into the world and serve him. That you become part of his fairness. That you become part of his mercy and his grace. Do this with the love of God, with the peace of Christ, and with the power of the Holy Spirit moving you forward. In his name, for his glory, amen. Thank you for coming. Have a wonderful week.